so, so we now have side quests starting to pop up in and around this area, but we'll continue on with the main story for now. Let's go ahead and speak with Hermes again to take on the next level 86 main story challenge entitled Lives Apart. Composure regained, Hermes is ready to return to his duties. If everyone is ready, there are a few creations I need to check on. First, we shall return to the spot where we found our wayward Ambistoma. Have care when you step outside a hub, for there may be more unruly creatures about. Alright. And we'll see you out there. Yeah, we'll pick up the side quest in the afternoon stream. For now, though, let's go and see what Hermes has in store for us. Yeah, it's a bit of distance out from the primary living area. For a moment, I thought that was a statue with its arms raised. And it looks like Hermes is trying to tame this butterfly. This here is a new species of Pataluda we recently set loose. It has been doing very well, managing to maintain a stable existence thus far. If it can see its observation period to the end without issue, we shall release it onto the world. Tell me, do you know the difference between living beings and arcane entities? Yeah, you're asking me this question? It is the presence of a soul. Yet the soul isn't something you can choose to have at will. No, it manifests only in those beings whose forms adhere to the laws of creation that can endure on their own. Beings that do not fulfill this requirement, such as those spontaneously born of magic or natural phenomena, do not have souls. No matter how much it might resemble flora or fauna, if it lacks a soul, then it is considered an arcane entity. That might be very helpful for what we need. So you see, it is not for mankind to decide what is living. That domain lies beyond our manipulation, and it is hubris to, assi to assume otherwise. Oh, that definitely changed over time. But come, let us head to the nearby beacon. I've received a report that arcane entities have gathered there. Alright, is he robed also? No, he's dressed in a... One of the, um... The, uh, the academy robes from... Uh, what's that, that place? It was the mystery in Ishgard. I can't remember what the name of it is now. Ugh. Yeah, it's not St. Mosian, that's the, that's the name of the dungeon. Alright, over to Hermes, who has some lightning sprites with him. Ah yes, Lightning Numa, just as the report said. Though we call this structure a beacon due to its form, it is in fact a magical device. By manipulating the balance of elements, it keeps the isle airborne and maintains the climate thereupon. In the course of its operation, it often sees an internal shift towards a given element. Right now, that element is lightning, which draws the Numa here to replenish their ether. That may also explain why the clouds are rolling in. Hmm, it appears Meteon is busy. And I guess he's curious about Emmet and Hathnodeus. Would you care to assist me in her stead and feed the Numa? Feed them? Yeah, what are you giving me? By using this lightning converger, you can harness ambient lightning and focus it into a ball. This a veritable feast for our dazzling friends. Go on, give it a try. Yeah, who would have thought we'd ever seen something like this? So, we'll put one right here. And then, yeah, I guess this one will feed two at once. And there we go. Alright, Hermes. Perfectly done, Rika. Look. Yeah, they're drawn to it easily. See how they gather to feed. How they express themselves through their actions, despite their lack of words. Speech is not the sole defining characteristic of a thinking, feeling creature. 
nor is silence an indication that they do not possess these qualities. Be it a soulless arcane entity such as the Numa, or an ephemeral life form such as the Petaluda, all seek to perpetrate their existence to survive. How is Median described? Yeah, is Median considered living? A good question. I can answer it from a theoretical standpoint, but it ultimately falls to the Bureau of Art the Architect to pass judgment. Yeah, look how kind of Thelodius is. Those with exceptional vision, such as Thelodius, may be able to ascertain her true nature. Do you not even know what it is? But to me, it doesn't matter. She is herself, and that is all I need to know. And it's like, what are you looking at? Oh, you finished already? I I'm sorry, I was in the way. Not to worry, my dear. They missed nothing of note, and we still have plenty of work for them to observe. Next, we will head east to the Morning Dew. I need to speak with some observers there. And so, let's be on our way. Yeah, lead on, you guys. And I know what a lot of you are probably thinking. What ultimately caused them to turn? What ultimately got, made them go on their... On their Ultron, Thanos-style rampage. As we almost ran into someone there. Oh, we found a Goobu. Hey there, Hermes. Let's complete this quest. Yeah, hello there, Goobu. Amazing, is it not? The Ampelos. One of our newest subjects. Ampelos, huh? So, how are we coming along? Oh, you're not going to tell us? Oh, we could have made a new friend. Meanwhile... Oh, look what we see. Yeah, more of Heidelin's fancy flowers. Yeah, we gotta get in for a closer look. Yeah, can we replace the one we lost? Yeah, can you explain a little better than that? They or maybe they can. They are a of and so named for their birthplace. A happy accident, born of the hands of a former researcher who loved beautiful blossoms. Happy accident. <laughs> Unique for how they change color, to reflect the emotional state of those nearby. Oh, the bright and white. Though be it here or elsewhere, they are seldom seen in any hue save purest white. Reflect the emotional state, you say? By what means do they achieve this? In creation, there exists an energy wholly apart from ether, one driven by emotions. In like manner to how we manipulate ether, this flower is subject to the influence of said energy. Yeah, we got to witness that for ourselves. Well, it has no will of its own. It is sensitive to the prevailing emotion in the vicinity and reacts by altering its color and vibrancy. Yeah, quite a look of shock on our face. Akasha? Akasha? It is one of the unseen energies defined by Hanish alchemical theory. Though a gross oversimplification, some describe it as an essence influenced by feeling. Yeah, Nidhana was on to something. Yeah, I think we're about to enlighten Hermes. Akasha, though I'm not familiar with the term, 
Your description suggests it is the self-same energy. That's right. Dynamis, we call it. Ah, that's what you refer to it as. Interesting. And those entities like the Elpis Flower, that have the ability to interact with this energy, converting emotions into tangible phenomena, are Antelekis. That's me! That's me! An Anteleki! That you are, my dear. And no ordinary one at that. But the first, possessed of free will. Wait. A form of energy other than ether? Dynamis? What's wrong with that, Emmett? I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah, perhaps it's something you could take onto your own self years down the line. Hardly surprising. Dynamis cannot be seen, much less felt. And though its existence has long been theorized, we had no proof until the flower's serendipitous creation. What's more, Dynamis is far weaker than ether. Under normal circumstances, its effects are drowned out by the latter. On account of which, beings comprised of and reliant upon the ether, like you and I, are unable to make practical use of Dynamis. So then, how does it happen in our world? Tis a truly esoteric thing, known to but a select few scholars. Intriguing. Then, given the limitations you described, why create Meteon? Give him a good answer. Come on, Hermes. Our star, Aetherus, is especially rich in ether. So much so that its name is derived from it. However, when we consider all energy in existence here and in the vast space beyond, Dynamis may account for as much as 68.3%. That's pretty specific. The more abundant form by far. Were we able to control it, we could open the door to limitless possibilities. Something tells me this particular line is where the seeds of the final days get sown. Tis not unlike a gently flowing stream, unable to break through the dam of ether barring its path. But if we could imbue the stream with the vigor of a raging river... Yeah, I'm looking at him intently. Uh, not that I have such grand ambitions. Well, someone did. Nay. I merely wish to create a being that could traverse the Great Expanse. The relative scarcity of ether beyond the bounds of this star was a concern. And so, I looked to another source of energy by necessity. Yeah, giving us some thought there. That being Dynamis. No wonder her ether is so thin. Precisely. Yours is thin too. Like an Entelechi. Like me. So... Are we the same? Entelechis. Sure, I don't see how I can be one. Well, I have been known to transcend by my limits with nothing but determination. Or if I'm thin, it's because Emmett Sulk didn't do a proper job. I yeah, I have been known to transcend my limits with nothing but determination. I mean, warrior of light and all that. That sounds more akin to the desperate flailings of a wild beast when facing imminent death. Oh, that's so like you, Emmett. Yeah, the look on my shot, the look on my face says it all. A deficit of ether alone does not an Entelechi make. It would, however, make it easier for you to interact with Dynamis. And limited though its influence may be, this quality could prove the difference between victory and defeat. You'd do well not to underestimate it. 
Yeah, apparently he knows that I'm someone who's proficient in combat. Oh dear. I'd forgotten about the poor fella. You must excuse me a moment while I go and verify a few more things. Yeah, he seems to have that kind of knack for not exactly um, being someone who pays all that much attention. So we'll take our experience in 1,102 gil. Hi there, Emmett. I guess the next quest belongs to you. Let's take on the level 86 main story quest entitled Their Greatest Contribution. Emmett Selk appears to be deep in thoughts. Not that I or anyone else would be able to make use of it even if we knew. But it irks me to discover that there's an entirely different form of energy and no one told me. That's why it was a surprise! That personal annoyance aside, Herman's knowledge is undeniably impressive. Given that there are none among the 14 who specialize in the Celestial, he would be a welcome addition. Assuming he can be persuaded to join, that is. I still can't understand his hesitation. I think I can. He loves Medion too much. Yeah. Expl Why did you join the conversation or the convocation or what do you specialize in? Yeah, I want to know your origins. Oh, you wish to know I am itself was chosen for the convocation. I should be glad to tell the tale, but I imagine he's going to cut you off. <clears throat> it began when... Not another word. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it was going to be that easy. Yeah, come on, out with it. Lest you've forgotten, we're here to learn about Hermes, not me. My misspent youth is not your concern. I still don't get why people love you. Hermes. My apologies for the wait. I've inspected the Ampelos to my satisfaction. All is well with the creature, and I dare say it won't be long ere it is released onto the world. Another creation, however, reportedly isn't faring too well. The Karids. That is what we shall attend to next. If you'll follow me, my friends, we shall return to the main island, head north. Alright. Hey there, Arizal. Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you with us. Alright, so yeah, we're... Oh, I could probably just as easily use the motorcycle to get back. Alright, let's go. Yeah, Emmett, you are a tough nut to crack. Why do people love you? Alright, so our next target is right over here. We have a troubled observer amongst the ranks. Speak with Hermes. Yeah, one does stand out from the others. Yeah, this is the Sesame Street thing. I understand that there is a problem with one of the cards. Yes, that's right. Let's have a look. As you know, the cards is based on a sea creature. Owing to adjustments to enhance its affinity to wind, it is capable of flight. The specimens created from the concept could all fly without issue, but a problem arose in subsequent generations. And so... This third generation creature was born with an etheric balance leaning strongly towards water, its aquatic origin reasserting itself, it would seem. The result being its affinity to wind is diminished, and it cannot fly. No matter what we try, we can't get it to rise even the slightest bit. So I guess you gotta put it down then? For such change to manifest in so few generations, I fear they are too unstable. Flawed. With your permission, I will revert the creatures and recommend to the Bureau that the concept be revised. Yeah. With its etheric balance leaning towards water, the Cowards would indeed struggle to manipulate wind. Yet it is too early to conclude that it cannot fly. Having failed at first, it may have simply developed a fear. I shall transform and fly with it, 
helping it to manipulate wind until it finds its wings. What? You needn't go to such lengths. Why not? You don't know. But of course not. Transformation is an art in which one manipulates a vast quantity of ether to construct another body around oneself. In practice, this allows one to, con to assume any conceivable form and thereby transcend the limits of one's flesh. Yet convenient though it may be, transforming in the presence of others is considered vainglorious in the extreme, as uncouth and unseemly as running about robeless. Shameful. So apparently streaking is a thing here? <laughs> Am I to understand you make a habit of this? Nothing of the sort. It's just that when transformed, I can wield the wind and fly. It may seem excessive, but what is our shame next to the lives of these creatures? They deserve a chance, and we owe it to them to do all in our power. Be that as it may. Hmm. Yeah. Hey there, Hythelodeus. What's on your mind? Yes, I believe I have a solution. Emmett Suck, may I trouble with you to move that courage away from its fellows? Somewhere out of sight. Don't kill it. Like, you're going to make me do a menial task. Meanwhile, I'd like the rest of you to help me prepare here. What mischief are you scheming now? No mischief, I assure you. I would but spare you the need to report to your colleagues that Hermes committed an indiscretion. <laughs> so have a little faith and run along. Damn. And it sucks like, whatever. I trust you don't mind. Yeah, take it somewhere else there, Emmett. And make sure that it doesn't spray you in the face. <laughs> Alright, let's continue on. Emmett Sulk is out of sight? Good. Let us speak of the plan. It is the stroke of genius, really. We have Emmett Suck train the carrots. Really? I don't think he's down with that. Aside from being able to fly untransformed, he can readily see ether currents. And with his adept spellcraft, he can also employ suitable wind magics to guide the creature along. While he is indeed capable of all you described, it is not his duty. I am loath to trouble him with it. Yeah, I think he's very bound to his duty and won't deviate from it no matter what. Don't be. As I mentioned, it would also be for his own sake. Without settled, let us begin at once. Rika, I want you to go to Emmett Selk. Tell him that you have a favor to ask. <laughs> you would be disinclined to cooperate at first, you think? But you mustn't be discouraged. With our friend, the trick is to be unflaggingly persistent. Off you go now, and good luck. I have a favor to ask to indicate to Emmett Suck you have a request. That is gonna get shot down in a heartbeat. But alright, anything to humor you, Hathlodius. So, going around the north end of the island. And he's uh, at quite a bit of distance. But we'll go in to see if we can't help him out. Also, along the way, I should be. Yeah, checking for Aether Currents, so it seems like there's going to be one in the vicinity of the neighborhood. Yeah, let's get over here to Old Skeptic Emmet. Well, are your preparations for the scheme that is clearly not a scheme complete? <laughs> I'm just doing what I'm told. Yeah, I'm, I'm just doing what I'm told there, Emmet. Anyway. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not lifting a finger. Not what I expect you to. 
I don't know what Hathlerius is up to, and I will not be made to know. I refuse. If Hathlerius is to be believed, relentless insistence may serve to wear down the ever-weary Emmet Selk. Now say, oh, now we're gonna put in a please, and maybe a pretty please to go with it. And I do it! No, no, no. You are not foisting this nonsense on me. Oh, come on. Oh, hey, you two. I'm given to understand you have the power to help the Charybdis, and should be quite willing to do so. And so I appeal to your better nature, most benevolent Emmet Selk. Please teach her to fly. Or else Hermes will transform. Right now. Is that your idea of a threat? Now, now, there's no need to go quite that far. Altruism is its own reward, as I'm sure he would agree. Oh, would he now? And who contrived to put me in this position, pray tell? Nothing so devious. I merely suggested a possible course of action. You certainly did. Yeah. Or else. Please, Emmett Sulk. Please. <sighs> yeah, we're gonna force to be grudgingly on you no matter what. <sighs> I did not come all this way to play nursemaid to your creations. I thank you to remember this favor and let it be the last. Ah. Mission accomplished. And so, with a snap of his fingers. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, look how shocked we all are. It's Ixion. I will aid it once it is taken to the air. It falls to you to shepherd it skyward. All right, let's do it. Well, let's relax and enjoy the spectacle, shall we? Indeed. All right, do your thing. You were wondering why Emmett Selk joined the convocation. Oh, so that was your plan all along. Truth be told, he wasn't the first choice for the office. I was. On the strength of my ability to see Ether. Oh, well, now we know why he became the jerk that he was. But I declined the offer. For though my vision is exceptional, I am pedestrian in all other aspects. Worse even. Quite abysmal when it comes to manipulating Ether, for example. Couldn't transform even if I had a mind to do so. Well, at least you wouldn't acknowledge your own limitations. What good is the ability to perceive a problem if one cannot act to address it? Exactly. Emmett Selk has no such shortcomings. He excels in vision and manipulation both. The latter to an extraordinary degree. If there is a mage more powerful, I do not know of them. Maybe a little too more too powerful. Thus did I recommend him for the office in my stead. And I wasn't the only one. Far from it. Countless others vouched for his skill and character. People the world over. To whom he had previously lent a helping hand. Yeah, if he, if he was so good at lending helping hands before, why is he so averse to doing it now? <laughs> oh, how surprised he was. Claimed he hadn't done anything remarkable for anyone. Modest to a fault. He deserved every bit of acclaim he received. Yet he may well have gone unappreciated were it not for a mutual friend. And who is that mutual friend? Do we get to meet them here? A singular soul who can't help but involve herself in the business of others. Where she walks, excitement is certain to follow. 
Her antics irritate Emmett Selk to no end. But much of his grumbling stems from genuine concern. Yeah, I can see that. When our friend calls, he never fails to answer and lend his talents. Yeah, Medion cheering it on. And hey, it worked. And in the course of doing so, he himself came to be recognized and respected by those around him. <sighs> they are truly remarkable individuals, and I'm proud to call them friends. To help them realize their dreams. This will be my greatest contribution to our world. Yeah, sir, sadly it ended up turning out to be your greatest nightmare. And when they have fulfilled their respective purposes, so too shall I have fulfilled mine. And together we may return to the star. Look at me, spilling my innermost secrets. I can't seem to help it with you. Well, you always were forthcoming. I can only assume it is due to the color of your soul. I just don't understand how you can be so alike and yet so different. <laughs> well done, my pet. Well done. Yeah, I think we're about to explain some things to Hyphlodius, but yeah, we meaning I got our attention. Yeah, show off your skills. Yeah. Am I done now? Ah, uh, yes. I dare say the Charybdis will be fine here on. Why don't you go and signal to Emmett Selk? Let him know that his arduous task is at an end. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, we're gonna stop the torture now, Emmett, so you'll be just fine. Alright, still got to get his attention, so we got to wave like, Okay, you can come down now. Yeah. Hey, Emmett, over here! Emerging from his reverie, Emmett Silk notices you and begins to descend. So, with mission accomplished... I have no words to express my gratitude. Thanks to you, the courage this is, had learned to fly. Yeah, I think it looks happy. And Drake and I could relax and have a pleasant chat. I'm sure you did. The creature needed some small assistance at first, but soon it was flying more or less on its own. I doubt you will need to repeat the lesson. I guess. That was truly impressive. I witnessed it all from afar. The Corridus flies! Indeed, we have with this we've proven that even a creature with skewed etheric balance is capable of flights. Though we helped it to achieve this, the Cowardice is a herd animal. They may well aid with their struggling kin in like fashion, if and when the need arises. Keeping this in mind, I bid you continue observing them. If that is what you want. But, if I may say so, rather than hoping an idealistic possibility comes to pass, would it not be simpler to have the concept adjusted? That way, we could guarantee that it's anomalies such as this specimen are never born in the first place. Now, these creatures are already here. We will spare no effort in giving them a chance to survive. As you wish, Chief. As you wish. Yeah, I, th I think he struck a nerve there. Because the music stopped abruptly. Like, how dare you say that about my creations? Hermes? 
Yeah, we gotta get your attention there, man. I'm fine, don't worry. Well, that concludes all of my present tasks. Let us return to adding Norsis for now. Alright. Let's head on back. Okay, so we all... Yeah, we'll just warp back to... Adding Norsis. And here's everyone. So we'll speak with Emmett to complete the quest. What? Want to apologize for forcing me to help, do you? Save your breath. You didn't force me to do anything. I merely chose the most expeditious way to have done with an, imp with an impediment to do our business. Yeah, that's the way you want to put it, but we'll take our experience 1,312 gil plus a pair of level 86 leggings. 